Hey guys, my name is Jeff. Welcome back to Hack Camp Bass's Beginner's Guide to Bass Fishing. This is part six. Today we're gonna talk about knots and how to use them to tie baits to our line. And we're also gonna talk about how to properly rig up certain baits. So up to this point in the guide, we have everything we need to get out on the water. We have our rod, we have our reel spooled up with some line, we have our essential baits, we're ready to go. We just need to tie up our baits to our line with a really strong knot. One of the most heartbreaking things about bass fishing is losing a fish after it's been hooked. Now that can happen for a few different reasons, but a very common cause of that is a failed knot. So needless to say, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to tie a strong knot and how to tie them properly. There are a lot of good knots out there. The Palomar is a very common knot. So is the improved clinch knot. Those are some pretty good choices, but an even better choice, in my opinion, is the uni knot, which is what I recommend to anyone starting out. It's arguably one of the strongest knots that there is, and it's also pretty easy to tie with some practice. To learn how to tie it, Check out this clip from our video dedicated entirely to the uni knot. Begin by running the end of your line through the eye of the hook. Then turn the end of the line back towards the eye and form a loop. At this point, with one hand, pinch both strands and the crossing strand. Next, start wrapping the tag end around both strands of line and through the loop using your free hand. The amount of wraps can vary, but as a general rule, the more wraps the better. Then, pull the tag end until the wraps come together, forming an adjustable loop. Finally, pull the main line to slide the knot down to the eye of the hook. A few more things about knots. You can use a variety of tools to clip excess line when you're tying. Fingernail clippers and scissors are common for lines like mono. For heavier lines like braid, a sharp knife is usually required. Also, where you actually tie your knot to differs from bait to bait, but they're usually pretty easy to spot. For worm hooks, you'll tie to the eye of the hook. On most hard baits, you'll tie to pieces called split rings, which on a crankbait are always on the lip and on the top of the body for lipless crankbaits. On most jigs, you'll see some built-in eyes on the head that we often call line ties, and you'll see some similar looking pieces to tie other baits to as well. For a spinner bait, you're gonna tie the knot to the elbow part of the wire frame. And finally, as a general rule, you should always retie your knots after hooking a fish, getting snagged, or if your baits are deflecting off of hard objects very frequently. The integrity of your knots can be easily compromised if the line around the knot starts to fray or develop nicks. So it's a great habit to retie often. The last thing we want to talk about is how to rig up our baits. Now a lot of the baits we use like crank baits and spinner baits and top water don't really require any extra work to rig, but others, especially the ones that use uh, plastics do, and this usually means threading the plastic onto a hook. So let's show you how to do some basic rigging. The most common way to rig a soft plastic worm or creature bait is the Texas rig. Begin by pushing the top of the bait through the point of the hook. Slide it down just a little bit then push the hook point back out of the plastic. How far you first slide the bait down the hook should be about the same as the length of the hook shank. Next, you're gonna slide the plastic all the way up the hook to where it's just beyond the eye. And while doing that, you'll twist the bait 180 degrees. Last, with the plastic now dangling, pinch the plastic so that your fingers are lined up with the bottom of the hook. Still pinching, move the plastic up and push it through the hook point 
in a sort of downward motion and then straight back out. One more modification you can make is to hide the hook point by doing this. And we call this rigging it weedless because it will be relatively snag free. To complete the setup, we need to add weight to the Texas rig. So before tying the knot to the hook, slide a weight down the line. Bullet weights are the most common, which is one of the essential pieces of tackle from last video. Next is the Wacky Rig. The Wacky Rig is used most often with Cinco style worms and it's very easy to rig. You're simply going to push the hook point in and out of the center of the worm and then slide it down so that it sits at the bottom of the hook. This rig allows the worm to flutter and flap naturally as it falls. The last rigging technique we want to demonstrate is how to rig up a soft plastic trailer to baits like jigs and chatterbaits. Begin by pushing the top of the plastic through the hook point like you would a Texas rig. The shank of the hook for baits like jigs is often much longer, so you're going to be threading the plastic much further up the hook. When you think you've threaded it through far enough, push the hook point out and continue sliding the plastic all the way up the shank until it's secure. All right, guys, that's going to do it for part six. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the series so far, hit that like button. Be sure to share it with other people that are interested in bass fishing. We're going to be back next time with part seven. We're going to start talking about where to locate fish and some ideal places to start fishing. Now, choosing which baits to use can be one of the more fun aspects of bass fishing because there's just so many different kinds to try. Reels that we use in bass fishing. There's the bait casting reel, which we also call the bait caster and the spinning reel. The first category of baits we're going to talk about are spinner baits. The spinner bait is the classic bass fishing lure. You see that as either medium, medium heavy, heavy, or maybe even extra heavy. And you're also going to see the action rating or taper.